question. Well, I'm joined by Sven Richter. He's Managing Director for Frontier Markets at Renaissance Asset Management. Very good to have you with us. Thank you. So your world has changed dramatically in the last uh, four to six weeks here. How have you adjusted your investment strategy as a result? Well, it has changed, but our job really is to continue to look at the world and make the best investment decisions driven by where they are at this particular point in time. So what are we doing at the moment? We focus a little bit more on countries where the rising oil price is a positive, and also to a certain extent where rising, fuel price, rising food prices, sorry, long term in the future or, or sort of short term in a year to two years will see more positive impacts because they're agricultural producers rather than people who uh, import agriculture. So the focus really is still inflation, that's the big yes. concern. Yes, I mean inflation is really the mechanism whereby all this is transferring to the rest of the world. Inflation is a concern that we have and it's the one thing that we focus on very carefully at the moment. But this has specific ramifications for investments in the Middle East. What are you doing with those investments? Well, I mean, at a place like Libya at this point in time, it's too early really to make a decision either way because it's in just such a turmoil that you can't really see through the issues. But in a place like Egypt, early on we were looking through the issues because Egypt is a different environment to Libya. Egypt has a functioning um, bureaucracy, a functioning government, even though there was a change in government, you could see where things were going to move in terms of Egypt. Libya, though, is a different issue, and Libya is a place that we stay out of at the moment. But Egypt is a place that we'll be interested in. The only thing we would ask is, please open the market so we can transact in Egypt. Well, this is one of the things. If you well, you op open the stock market, of course, but these these dem these changes mm. could bring democracy, which could bring liberalization of markets, which could be a good thing. Yes. But how long does that take? Take it to pay off here? Well, you know, immediately there tends to be a little bit of a benefit as there's a euphoria, people are happy, and things go up. And then things will sort of slow down for a little while while people find their feet, while they figure out how to do things. And then over the next two years or so, we think we'll see a tremendous benefit from not so much democracy, but just the freedoms that people have to transact their lives, to, to start businesses, to, to fully integrate into the economy. And that the economy benefits not just the small rent-seeking elite, which has been at the top of some of these countries, but spreads out much broader. And you find in a place like Egypt, 80 million people benefit instead of just sort of 10 odd million or so who at the top of the pile. So tell me specifically where you put your money, where are the buying opportunities right now? Okay, we think there are three interesting opportunities at the moment. One is Nigeria, and Nigeria is a beneficiary from the oil price, obviously, because they export a lot of oil. The next one is Kenya. Kenya is a little bit more of a longer term beneficiary. It's not immediately in the first six months or so, but Kenya is a great agricultural country. It's got 40 million people, and they're doing a lot of exciting things in Kenya to focus that economy and grow it. And then Vietnam. Vietnam is also about 80 million people, um, low wages, very attractive in terms of manufacturing base, and then of course the consumer that builds up off that is exciting as well for us as an investment opportunity. All right. Thanks very much, Sven Richter. We thank you very much from Renaissance Capital.